In this series, we're going to go over all the cards that are banned in Legacy and explain why they're banned. Today, we're going over a couple of cards that are banned in Modern as well, as well as some other extremely powerful cards that have been around for a long time. Starting us off, we have Deathrite Shaman. This is a 1-2 Elf Shaman with the mana cost of black green hybrid mana. It has the abilities where you can tap it to exile target land from your graveyard to add one mana of any color. You can pay one green and tap it to exile target creature card from graveyard and gain two life, and you can pay one black and tap it to exile target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard to make each opponent lose two life. This card was banned in July of 2018. Why was this card banned? Well, this card was banned for largely the same reasons it was in the modern format. Cards like Birds of Paradise were considered powerful for its ability to ramp you while also fixing your colors. Deathrite is basically a way, way better version of Bop in every single way. It has better stats, an easier mana cost to cast, and has two very useful abilities that Bird doesn't have. The only downside is the card is needed to have lands to exile. However, since fetch lands are so powerful, this is never an issue. This mana fixing allowed the deck to play up to four colors with basically no way for your opponent to punish them. And on top of this mana fixing, Shaman was also a very useful creature in a ton of matchups. Able to push out more damage, give you more life, and deal with threats in the graveyard. Now, this is all basically the same as what the card did in Modern, where it's also banned. Shaman actually stayed around for four more years in Legacy because the format was more powerful than Modern and was more able to handle the card's power. Still, eventually the meta was just bent around the card too much, so Wizards banned it. Could Deathrite Shaman be unbanned? This is a soft no, but it's a bit close. It's a bit up in the air exactly what decks, if any, would be interested in Shaman right now. The card's most common home has been Delver of Secrets or other similar tempo mid-range strategies. It's debatable about whether or not these decks would switch from their streamlined two-color variants to the more powerful but more clunky four-color variants of the deck. There are also various other more fair decks that would consider running the card. While it's hard to say what the impact of unbanning the card would be, the most likely result is making the best deck in the format even better, so unbanning the card seems very silly. How could Deathrite Shaman be fixed to be unbanned? First off, the mana cost needs to require green mana. Being a hybrid mana cost makes the card too easy to cast. It might need some other nerfs, like increasing the cost of its other activated abilities, but it should be fine by just being restricted to green. Next up, we have Gitaxian Probe. This is a source with a mana cost of 1 Phyrexian Blue, meaning you can pay it with either 1 Blue or 2 Life. It has the effect where you look at target player's hand and then draw a card. This card was banned at the same time as Deathrite in July of 2018. Why was Gitaxian Pro banned? The big issue is that the card just doesn't have any cost. Two life usually doesn't matter, and the card cycles, meaning most of the time when you cast a taxing probe, you're just up for information. This can be really good for combo decks, as it allows you to check your opponent's hand for interaction and allow you to play around whatever they have. However, making this card even better is the fact that there are tons of synergies and interactions that make the card even better. For example, casting a probe ups your storm count, allowing your storm cards to copy themselves an additional time. However, even small synergies can go a long way with a card like probe. For example, one of the best threats in Legacy is Dragon Rage Channeler, who has the ability where whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you look at the top card of your library, then put it on top of your library or into your graveyard. This turns Pro from a cycle into basically a Consider, which is a card that a ton of decks play in weaker formats for its ability to help you find the right cards and fill up your graveyard. However, while these synergies aren't even necessary, sometimes just getting to check your opponent's hand for interactions is so strong that it will completely change the tide of the game. And due to how this card made combo decks far, far harder to interact with, Wizards banned the card. Can Gitaxian Pro be unbanned? This is a no. The combo decks really don't need this kind of boost, as it would just make it really hard for decks to interact with them. This would really push out a ton of fair decks that can't afford to run a huge amount of free interaction to stop these combos. How could Pro be fixed to be unbanned? This card just needs to not cast for Phyrexian mana. As seen with cards like Street Wraith, a zero mana cycle is an incredibly strong effect. Getting any extra value on top of that makes it way too easy to break the card. Next up, we have Lurus of the Dream Den. This is a 3-2 Legendary Cat Nightmare with a mana cost of 1 and 2 hybrid black-white mana. It has Companion, your starting deck contains no permanence with a mana value greater than 2. This means that you can reveal this card from your sideboard at the start of the game if you meet its companion requirement. Then you pay 3 mana during your main phase later on to put Lurus from your sideboard into your hand. It has lifelink, meaning it dealing damage causes you to gain that much life. It also has the ability where you can cast a permanent spell with a mana value of 2 or less from your graveyard on each of your turns. This card was banned in May of 2020. Why was Loris banned? Well, Loris is a pretty infamous card, as are all 10 of the companions for that matter. Loris on its own is a fine card. Its stat line is okay, but being able to play a card from your graveyard every turn was extremely strong. This basically gets you a free card every turn. However, since you get to choose what card to cast, you actually get a good degree of card selection too. This wouldn't be enough to get the card banned, but the companion ability completely broke the card. 
First off, getting around the companion requirement is basically free. Most of the cards you want to play in a format like Legacy either cost 2 or less mana or aren't permanents. The only exceptions are Delve Threats like Murktide Regent, but that's an acceptable loss for getting so much card advantage. 6 mana is a lot to get the card out, since you know you'll get so much card advantage late game, you can afford to expand resources to slow your opponent down. Once you get Loras down, you'll usually start running away with the game. Now, the thing that made the card so bannable was the fact that basically every deck could play it for no cost. Since all the permanents cost so little and the upside of playing Loras was so high, it slotted into almost every deck. The card was so widespread that the ban was basically a foregone conclusion. Could Loras be unbanned? No. All the same problems still exist. Delver is still the best deck and could still play the card. Though, they might need to rethink about whether or not it's quite worth it. And there are a ton of other decks like Death Shadow decks that could also use the card to great effect. How could Loras be fixed to be unbanned? You have to remove the companion ability. We've gone over this before and will again, but the companion ability is just too powerful. Next up, we have Zerda the Dawn Waker. This is a 3-3 legendary elemental fox with a mana cost of 1 and 2 hybrid white red mana. It has companion, each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. It has the ability where the abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost 2 less to activate, and this can't reduce the cost to less than 1 mana. It also has the ability where you can pay 1 and tap it to prevent target creature from blocking this turn. This card was banned in May of 2020. Why was Zerda banned? Well, the card was actually part of a 2 card combo. You see, there was a card called Basalt Monolith with the ability where you can tap it for 3 colorless and then you can pay 3 to untap it and it doesn't untap in your untap step. With Zerda out, the ability to untap it will only cost 1 mana. Meaning you can tap it for mana, get 3 mana, use 1 to untap it, getting an untapped monolith with 2 mana left over. This will let you produce infinite mana. Once you have infinite mana, you could use it to cast a spell like Walking Ballista to ping your opponent to death. This slotted perfectly into a deck called Bomberman, a deck that tried to use Salvagers with Lion's Eyes Diamonds to make infinite mana to win in largely the same way. The thing is, since Zerda was a companion, you could start the game with it in your command zone, meaning your 3 card combo goes down to a 2 card combo. This was extremely problematic, especially since it was very hard to interact with companions, so wizards banned the card to stop this combo from being problematic. Could this card be unbanned? This one is another no. Letting these decks have a combo where one half of the combo just can't be interacted with outside of a counter spell is just way too much for the format. There's also the issue that it's a companion and the fan base just hates companions. So everyone kind of wants the card to stay banned regardless of how good it actually is. How could this card be fixed to be unbanned? Again, just remove the companion ability. Next up we have Mana Drain. This is an instant with a mana cost of 2 blue with the effect where you counter target spell. Then, at the beginning of your next pre-combat main phase, you can add an amount of colorless mana equal to the spell's mana value. This card was banned in September of 2004. Why was Mana Drain banned? Well, Mana Drain was kind of just a counter spell with a crazy upside attached to it. Counter Self itself is a very strong card, and there aren't that many 2 mana unconditional counters in Magic. This has led to the card seeing a ton of playing Legacy throughout the years though its usage has been slowly decreasing over time. So we have a card that's already playable, and we've given it an upside. So just how good is Mana Drain's ability to give you extra mana? Well, it's pretty crazy. Getting 2 or 3 extra mana to use on your turn can let you do some pretty absurd things. For example, if your opponent casts a 3 drop and you Mana Drain it, on your next turn you'll have 6 mana to use, assuming you went second. With all that mana, you can either play a game-ending threat, or play two 3-drops, or some other combination of cards. This will allow you to get incredibly far ahead on board or play a powerful draw spell without giving up any tempo. These sorts of ritual effects are often very strong, but usually only in very specific decks. For example, as crazy as Dark Ritual is, it basically only sees playing combo decks. However, since Mana Drain is just a strictly better counter spell, you can run in all matter of decks and try to get a huge blow off off of it. Interestingly, this is a card that was buffed a lot by rules changes, specifically the removal of mana burn. This was a mechanic where whenever mana emptied from a player's mana pool, that player would lose that much life. This rule was removed because it was largely superfluous, but with cards like Mana Drain, it ended up making them a lot better. It used to be that if you couldn't spend the mana that Mana Drain gave you, you'd end up taking damage. But now it's all upside. So, since this card was too good, wizards banned the card. Could Mana Drain be unbanned? This is actually a yes. You see, Legacy has changed a lot since Mana Drain's ban. There are a few issues with Mana Drain nowadays. First off, most of the spells you'll be casting won't cost that much mana. The majority of spells in Legacy cost 1 or 2 mana at most, so you really aren't getting anything off of the card. Sure, a lot of decks do have some super expensive cards, but it's not that common, and you'll often have to use Mana Drain on very cheap spells. 
This isn't the biggest deal, but it does make the card worse, as you're not getting anywhere near as much value off of the card. Secondly, since the spells players are cast in Legacy are so cheap, the colorless mana drain gives you often won't even do anything. Lots of blue decks will have hands with basically no generic mana in the cost of their cards. You could play some more expensive cards to get more value off a of drain, but that's definitely not worth it. Especially since you aren't getting the blowouts you want. The final issue is that nowadays, Counterspell is kind of a bad card in Legacy. Sure, the card is serviceable, but there are much better options available. And most blue decks opt to run as many free counters as they can so they don't have to try and leave up mana for their opponent's turn. Basically, Mana Drain's upsides aren't anywhere near as big as the deals they used to be, and the floor of the card has gotten to the point where there's just no reason to use it over better options. Next up, we have Memory Jar. This is an artifact with a mana cost of 5. It is the ability where you can tap it and sacrifice it to make each player exile their hand face down and then draw 7 cards. And then at the end of the turn, each player discards their hand and returns all cards X up a memory jar to their hand. This card was banned in March of 1999. Why was Memory Jar banned? This card was pretty infamous for being the first emergency ban in the history of Magic the Gathering. You see, after the March 1999 ban list release, it came to light just how broken the card would be. So they had to retroactively add Jar to the list. Why was this? Well, Memory Jar was included in Urza's block, one of the most broken blocks in all of Magic. This set included cards like Sarah's Sanctum, Gaia's Cradle, and Tolarian Academy. Lands that you could tap to add one mana of each color for each permanent you controlled of a certain type. The best was Tolarian Academy, as it was very easy to flood the board with tons of artifacts when compared to other card types. Then you could use cards like Turnabout to untap each land or artifact you control, or play a card like Bind Over Matter to repeatedly discard a hand to untap your academy. With all of these ways to make tons of mana, all you needed was a way to draw more cards, and Memory Jar was great at doing this. For a measly 5 mana, this could let you draw a full new hand of 7 cards. By combining this with other incredibly powerful draw spells like Windfall, you could rip through your entire deck incredibly quickly. Being an artifact made Memory Jar broken in a ton of other ways too. For example, you could use cards Goblin Welder to cheat the card out of the graveyard. It was also able to be tutored out with cards like Tinker, and could be cast off of a busted lands like Mistress Workshop that makes a ridiculous 3 mana, but only for artifact spells. Basically, Memory Jar had a ridiculously powerful effect and happened to be the perfect card type for it to have tons of extra synergies to make it even more busted than other similar cards. Considering the power of Memory Jar and the environment the card was printed in, it's no wonder that Wizards banned the card so quickly. Could Memory Jar be unbanned? This is a no. The card is actually pretty close to being fine to unban. 5 mana for a wheel is pretty bad for most decks that would want the effect. But normally combo decks would probably just play Ad Nauseam instead, as it often actually drew them more cards. The card that makes it so that this card can't come off the list is the previously mentioned Goblin Welder. This a 1 mana goblin being able to tap itself to switch a jar in your graveyard with any random artifact on the battlefield would be by far the best thing to do a jar in the format. Welder sees playing Mono Red Painter, a deck that tries to assemble Painter's Servant and Grindstone to mill your opponent in one fell swoop. Welder is already great in the deck, and the deck would love to have a hand to refill to be able to dig for more parts of the combos or more mana ramp cards like Mox Opal to be able to pull off their combo. Jar's ability to draw so many cards when combined with Welder specifically is really the only scenario where the card is too good. Could Memory Jar be fixed to be unbanned? There's not much you can do, since Welder's ability to nab the card makes it far too easy to abuse. The best answer is adding an ability that would make you exile the card instead of putting it into the battlefield if it would enter the battlefield without being cast. But this kind of ham-fisted approach to stopping combos is pretty uncommon. Alternatively, you could reduce the number of cards it draws you. Reducing it to 4 cards would be a big nerf, but it would be very easy to unban it at that point. Alright, and that's the video. If you have any other ideas for future videos similar to this one, please let us know down in the comments below.